Good day everybody and welcome back to the beautiful Tinker Box. Well, I'm standing in front of the usable wardrobe I once showed you for 1.3. And if any of you know what the word foreshadowing is, you would know what well whoa! I just hit like every F key that was not F5 to go back into first person view. You think after doing that so many times I'd be used to hitting F5. Well, like I said, if you know what foreshadowing is, you would understand we'll be looking at more decoration stuff today. And the first thing, uh, th there's three things I want to show you using uh, fence fences and pressure plates that I found. And then there's uh, one thing to do with 1.3 and steps again. So the first thing is I always find it really obnoxious to get a floor well lit and sometimes you don't want to put glowstone in your floor and you don't want to put pumpkins in your floor and you don't want to put glowstone lamps in the floor and I found a really good way to light a floor using a wooden floor and that is if you have a wooden floor you just cut a hole out put a piece of glowstone under it put a fence gate on, or not a fence gate, put a fence on top of that piece of glowstone, and on top of that fence you plop down a pressure plate. So you can kind of tell it's there, but not really. And, um, I mean, when you walk over it, you do pop up a bit. But I just, I don't know, I think I want to use this in the future, just because it's so, when usually when you're hanging lights and stuff, you'll have chandeliers and stuff in the ceiling that won't light the floor below at all. So I was trying to think of a way that someone could um, light their place sufficiently without having to worry about having hideous things in their floor. Now, the next thing I did was I realized something interesting about this. Now, normally when you walk over a pressure plate, it activates a redstone current. But as you can see here, when you do this specific configuration, the pressure plate won't go off. In fact, if I throw something on the pressure plate, it also doesn't go off. And that's because a fence is one and a half high, so the game pushes the object above where the pressure plate is so that you can't hit it. And the reason that's so interesting because is that the only way to really activate a pressure plate like this is to shoot an arrow into it. Which I thought was pretty neat. I don't know. Maybe you could incorporate that into something. An adventure map or a secret door entrance. I just thought it was kind of neat that because of the way fences work. Being one and a half high. And the way that um, these pressure pads work. That doing this specific combo. The only way to activate it is by shooting an arrow onto it. So that is pretty neat. And then... The one last thing I wanted to try is, um, if all else fails with these two ideas for what to do with this, you can just troll someone. You can make a doorway that they can't walk through. It's really obnoxious. And why would you ever want to do this? Let's say you build a place, maybe you do adventure maps, maybe you do worlds or something, and you want to make it look like you have something that's enterable without just making a massive wall. You could make like, I don't know, some sort of gate and then have like one of these so it looks like a person can go through, but really they can't. So I don't know, maybe you can use that for something instead of using like some kind of massive sheer wall thought it was interesting. Now the last thing is probably my favorite of all the things I'm going to show you today. It's a hidden chest. I mean, can't you see the chest? No? Good. I love this because of the lighting glitch. You would never know that it was there. So I mean, if you right click through that hole, you can see you have a chest in there. But just walking by, you're like, oh, there's a lighting glitch. It's kind of a black hole. Do 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 do. I mean, it's a great way to hide some diamonds and stuff. Now let me grab the correct materials and I'll show you how to build this since it's not as self-explanatory as putting a pressure plate on top of a fence. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is throw down your chest. The second thing whoops, is throw down stairs in front of it like so. And after you do that, you just put a block on either side, cover it up with half slabs, 
then bring the half slabs over. Because the half slabs are transparent, you can still open the chest with them over, over it and then you just fill it up. It's really important that you have the total chest surrounded because if you don't, if you have a hole on it somewhere, like say here, the lighting glitch doesn't work and it's really obvious that there's a chest there. So I just thought it was a neat way to use a lighting glitch that's usually kind of annoying to make a really nice hidden chest where you can store your diamonds and things like that. And heck, you can even make a wall design with it and have multiple hidden chests hiding plethoras of hidden materials. Anyway, those were a couple quick building tips. I don't do these very often just because I think I'm a hideous builder and I think anything that I try to build in Minecraft looks like complete and utter bub kiss. But, you know, we're not all natural born talents. So, this is Primary Artemis, YouTube username Studios 9 I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, consider like, commenting, or subscribing. It really helps out. And thank you to all those people who do do that. And I will see you the next time I'm posting a video on my channel. Until then, doodles!